So welcome everybody. Um, glad that you could be here. So this uh, event tonight is brought to you by Lean Portland and we're essentially a meetup group or started as a meetup group of Lean and Six Sigma professionals that wanted to come together to share resources and learn from each other. Um, our mission is to help people make work better. So uh, here at Lean Portland, we do that, or we've kind of evolved over many years to these three ways that we do that. So we do this first Tuesday happy hour, um, which used to be in a bar in Portland. And since uh, COVID, we've moved that to a virtual format. Uh, which we're all here today for. We also do some free and donation-based workshops just in the area of continuous improvement so that we can share um, the skills, knowledge, discussion that we have with everybody in the community, as well as we do uh, volunteer pro bono consulting with local nonprofits, which has been a really great way to um, take the skills that we typically learn in the workplace and be able to practice them out in an area that is different from our normal systems that we're working with. So um, uh, we're honored today, I feel honored today, to, to use all of the, the gifts that we all bring to this space um, and especially thinking back to all the people that came before us, especially Norman. So Norman, I want to welcome you to our, our Lean Portland group here. Uh, I was looking back to the last time that you spoke at one of our events and Matt had written down that it was your 80th trip to Japan or something like that. And this was in 2017. And I think you told me the other day that you're, this is your 95th trip to Japan. Is that correct? Yes, 95, yes. Yeah. So, you know, in the lean community, we're very lucky to and have this kind of body of knowledge that has come from all the people before us. Uh, and one of those pioneers of lean is Norman Vodek. So Norman made it his mission to find geniuses in Japan and to bring their work to the West. Known as the godfather of lean, Norman's company, Productivity Press, has published over a hundred books, including Taiichi Ono's Toyota production system. Uh, and up until this weekend, Norman was living right over the river from us in Portland in Vancouver, Washington. So we're lucky to have him as part of our community. Um, and in addition to sharing his time with us today, he's also gifted Lean Portland with a lot of books from his library and some of the original Productivity Press newsletters which I am looking forward to um, perusing. So um, Norman's latest discovery is the greatest coach in the world. And before I turn it over to him, I just wanna go through a couple of announcements and um, some logistics for tonight. So uh, here are some of the, well, here's tonight's event. And then right now, all we have on the calendar are the next two happy hours, both in October and November. We usually decide like what kind of programming or format we're going to do for those, um, I don't know, four to six weeks before. So watch this space on Eventbrite for um, what kind of activity we might do at those happy hours. I also wanted to um, remind everybody about a contest we're doing, Lean at Home. So you can find the details of that on our website, leanportland.com. Uh, we're looking, collecting entries until September 30th. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, uh, but any way that you've been able to implement lean or continuous improvement in your home, we want to be able to promote that. So agenda for tonight, here we are with our welcome and introductions. Norman's going to talk a little bit about uh, the greatest coach in the world. We'll have time for questions. And we'll do a sort of wrap up around six, and then we can continue the discussion and networking um, beyond that into 6.30, and we'll kind of wrap up around 6.20 so that we can um, close by 6.30. All right. So with that, 
I'm going to turn it over to Norman. Let me stop my sharing here. Okay, and Maria. There you go. Yeah, Maria and Brian and Matt, thank you very much for this opportunity today. It's a privilege for me. I'm going to talk about my latest discovery. I've been in Japan 95 times because I've published over 100 Japanese books in English. That's what I've done for the last 40 years. All do me a favor, please. Put your, put your mic on mute. Charlie, put your mic on mute. Everybody, because we're getting certain feedback. Thank you very much. And then after my presentation for about 30 minutes, then we'll, you'll pick on your mics and you, could, you can all ask questions. So thank you very much for being here. This is Kazuyoshi Hisano. I found him about five, six months ago. He's an amazing man. I call him the world's best coach. He has coached 200 CEOs in Japan. You're looking at a Japanese book in front of him. Uh, I've translated that Japanese book into English and I'll be publishing it in a few weeks. He currently works with 25 CEOs right now and he set up a Gold Vision University in Tokyo, and he has 400 members um, that go to his university to learn and understand what he calls gold vision. Gold, gold, the word gold is really the word goal. If you can set a very high goal for yourself, you'll get the gold in life. That's what it means. You set a very high goal. If you know how to set goals, I went through life, through all of my educational life, which was, uh, you know, through high school, through college, through graduate school, and I was never asked to set a goal, never. I just did through life, you know, what it brought for me. But I'm gonna teach you in these few minutes to set a goal, something that you really want in your life. And then if you follow these step by step, you'll see how you could achieve that goal. Take notes, follow it precisely. Now the problem is I'm gonna to try to do this in 30 minutes and it takes about 18 hours to go through the course. So it, this is a cram course for you, a successful cram course. And it's based on the teachings from this man, Lou Tice. Now this is funny because I never met, I never discovered Lou Tice before. I've met so many geniuses in the world, never came across Lou Tice. He comes from Seattle. He was a high school coach. He was a very famous individual, and he wrote two, three really great books that I recommend you read. I've read Personal Coaching for Results. It's wonderful. I'm reading now his new his second book, Smart Talk. Also great. He is the foundation from Hisano. Hisano studied Lutais. Lutais was one of those that set up what's called cognitive science. How does the brain really work? And it's the beginning of what we call artificial intelligence had come from this study group. It's well worth for you to study Lutais. And look at this statement. Everyone is born a genius. And I agree. I was blessed just this last month with getting two great grandsons, two of them, two boys. These children, you can feel it. You can feel the energy in a baby. I mean, there's so much love. There's so much giving. And the, the amazing thing is the child is born with everything. And we, we try to teach it. The parents try to teach it. The parents say, Johnny, don't do that. This is one, this is amazing what we do with our children. And if you look around you, I mean, look in Portland, you got what, seven, 10,000 people that are homeless today. And yet everyone is born a genius and I believe it. We do something in our educational system which takes away the greatness from you. Now, what Hisano is teaching us is you can re-uncover that. You can bring it out. You can bring that genius out that you have, and you literally can have the kind of life that you want. Not what other people give you, it's what you want in your life. What you learn in this class quickly. I'm not sure how much I can give you, but I'll give you as much as I can. You're going to learn how to achieve your goal by understanding how your brain works. 
Your brain is an organ that can easily be deceived, and most of us are de deceived. We'll see why in what we do. You create your future memory to shift the conference zone. We're going to talk about this future memory, and we're going to talk about what this conference zone means. Everybody lives in a conference zone. You've created this world in your mind. You think what you see around you is real. No, what you see around you is what you projected in your mind, but you could change that. The entire system is simple and it's easy, but you need some patience to understand the concept. It takes a little time. Just understanding is not enough. By using the knowledge and the skills, you can internalize the full concept. I'm very happy to send you all a copy of the slides. After the presentation, you just send me your email address. The mind is a slayer of the soul. Rudy was a great teacher in my life. I was so fortunate to meet this man 50 years ago. I studied yoga and I met Rudy. What an amazing man. He once said the mind is a slayer of the soul. What does he mean by that? We go through life listening to this mind of ours. We think that mind is our friend. No, it's not. The mind is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. I love that too. Recognize your mind gives you about 70 to 100,000 thoughts a day. As I'm talking to you now, your mind is competing with me and it's chattering. This is the human mind. It's a terrible master. When you listen to your mind, you keep getting into trouble. It keeps you where you are instead of you recognizing the great genius that you are. If you could learn to control this mind, then it's a wonderful servant. But you have to learn how to do it. We're going to cover this a little bit of what you can do to change your patterns so that you can control your mind much better. RAS is, called, is the reticular activating system that's in your brain. What it does is it filters. You see, your brain records everything that you experience in your life. Everything that you smell, that you see, that you touch, that you hear is recorded in this amazing brain with these trillions of cells. It records everything. Then you look at something and the brain says, well, we've seen this before and it gives you some thoughts that it recorded. And you and the RAS system handles that for you. It's a subconscious event that filters those 70 to 100,000 thoughts and it tries to give you what it thinks is helpful, but it's only giving you things from your past. It's not able to really handle the current moment. So what do you do in the moment? How do you handle new things? We're gonna learn how to handle it in a whole new way. So the first part of this secret, I recommend you write all of this down. You should pick a very high goal to succeed in life. You pick something so far beyond, it's funny, you know, I started off being so insecure. I had no confidence in Norman, absolutely none. <laughs> so it's an amazing life. In fact, you could listen to my book. It's called An Amazing Life. You could Go to YouTube and listen for free. It has been an amazing life. What? It's a miracle. It's a miraculous a miracle is right. You pick a very high goal to succeed in life. You don't even know how you're going to get there. It doesn't matter. But in my life, I was always shy. I mean, I met so many great people. Deming, I mean, so many wonderful people. Shingo and Ono. So many great people I met in my life. But I never... And I met maybe 50 CEOs in my life because I used to run conferences called Productivity the American Way. And I would pick a CEO and I got, I got Andy Grove, the chairman of Intel. I got so many amazing people to keynote my conference. I'd meet these CEOs maybe for three hours and never see them again. Never was smart enough to know how to keep a contact with them. Never. But now in my life, I want to meet CEOs. So one of the things that I'm doing with you is I'm going to teach it to you, but I want you to introduce me to your CEO. I want to teach CEOs because they have the power to change your organization. That's the first thing. Pick a very high goal. Lutai said the goal comes first, then we perceive how to do it. 
But the problem is we don't pick goals. But you're going to change this. You are a very unique group to get this new session from me because I have learned from this Isano. He has certified me as an instructor. He will sit for a CEO for maybe 10 hours and he gets a lot of money for those 10 hours. He spent maybe 50 hours with me. It's amazing. I'm at the airport in Tokyo. He came and visited me last night, which was just wonderful. The goal comes first. So this is what you have to work on. I want you now during this half an hour, so when we end this session, you'll start telling me what your new goal is to get a wonderful life for you and for the rest of the world. I want you to look at this now. You might have seen this before, and I want you to tell me what you see. Well, I'm going to tell you what you see, because your mics are off. You see a vase, or you see two people looking at each other. You see a vase, or you see two people looking at it. But you don't see both at the same time. This is very interesting. You don't see both unless you have a very unusual mind. Look at this one. You might, you might have seen this before. Here, you can see also two different things. You can see a very young, pretty girl, or you can see an old woman. The pretty girl is here. This is her nose, her eyelid and this is her chin, or you can see the old woman, this is the old woman's mouth and her eyes. There are two people here, but you can only see one at a time. This is called the gestalt. The human mind can only focus on one thing at a time clearly. The human mind can only focus on one thing at a mind clearly. I want you to remember this as we go through this process. The way your mind works, so then we could retune this mind in a whole new way to follow what we want. This is an essence of the talk. I have almost 200 slides to teach, but I only selected a few for this 30 minutes. I intend to continue to teach this in America, but this is a summary of the power of this event. The goal comes first and then we proceed. The secret system to achieve your goal is this. You live here in a comfort zone. We call it a comfort zone. You might not be very comfortable, you might be miserable, but you live in a comfort zone. You live in your status quo. You live where your unconscious feels at ease. There are seven to 10,000 people in Portland living in the streets. Why? They were born a genius. Why are they living in the streets? because they've established a comfort zone. I know. I went down not too long ago to one of the homeless groups in Portland because I wanted to teach them. I wanted to teach these homeless people that they don't have to be homeless, that they could leave it. They could break out of this restriction where they live, where the habits have kept them. Now, I want you to understand you live in a gestalt. You live here where you think you are. But if you set a new high goal, you can create a new comfort zone and you could move yourself from here to there. There's a process, we call it feed forward, that you will move yourself from here to here, that you will then feel come. Now, since the brain can only be in one gestalt, you will choose one, the one with the stronger sense of reality. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the sense of reality of this new gold world. I want to teach CEOs. So I want to create a new world where I'm meeting new CEOs. I'm consciously going after now meeting new CEOs that I could teach them this wonderful, powerful concept that I've discovered in Japan. I feel Hisano is equal to Shingo and Ono. Shingo and Ono were the greatest in the world in manufacturing improvement. I mean, they created what we call lean. They created the total production system. It was such a privilege for me to meet those people and publish their books in English. And I recommend you read those books. Hisano to me is equal on a personal, personal side, on the human side, to help you change your life. Ono and Shingo is changing the life of manufacturing. Hisano is giving you a chance to change your life. It's doable. You have to believe in yourself. The secret, listen to your intuition, not your mind. 
when you set a high goal, your intuition will guide you. I have a wonderful intuition, wonderful intuition, but I've been so stupid in my life not to know how to listen to it. I'm sitting in graduate school at New York University and I'm trying to get a master's degree in accounting and I'm gonna take statistics. This is back in 1950s. I'm gonna take statistics. And Howard, so-called friend, Howard says to me, Norman, don't take statistics, don't take it, it's too hard. But I'm very good in math. But for some stupid reason, I don't take statistics. And who do you think taught the course? Who do you think taught it? Dr. Deming was the teacher. I could have seen Deming 30 years before I met him later. If I didn't listen to Howard, if I listened to my intuition. You have a great teacher inside you. I call it the Jimmy Cricket, if you remember Pinocchio. Everybody has a conscious. Everybody has a Jimmy Cricket. You have to learn how to listen to it. And it will tell you what to do, that intuition. The third secret is believe strongly in yourself that you can attain your goal. You must have confidence in yourself. I teach now this method all over the world. I teach it on Zoom. Some of you like, might like to join my sessions. I have people, I have a good friend in England. I really like this man. He's very, very bright. He just has no confidence in himself. And we're going to teach you today what you have to do to get that confidence for yourself. Not too complicated, but you got to do it. You got to take charge of this brain. You are the master of this brain. It will listen to you if you start talking to it. This is the house of Hisano. This is the house that comes, what he calls it, the cognitive corporate coaching building blocks. This is what I teach. And if you want to sign up with me later, I'm happy to take, take you into one of my future classes. This shows the whole structure. One is to create futuristic thinking. Learn how to create your own future. Not letting the future create it on its own. You create it. You have to learn how to self-talk. Many, many years I took a mind control course and they taught me to say, I'm better and better in every day, every way. I'm better and better in every way, every day. I said that over and over and over and over again to myself. When I was younger, I was afraid of flying. I was afraid of heights. It was amazing. I was in the army, I had to go through the obstacle course. I couldn't do it. I couldn't climb a telephone pole. I walked around and I was so lucky that the captains and the lieutenants never saw me. I just walked around. I was so afraid. Then somebody taught me to chant. And I repeated self-talk for one month. I kept talking to Norman over and over and over and over and over again. At the end of the month, all my fears disappeared. It worked. It was magic. You're going to create a whole new self-image of yourself as you begin to believe in yourself. Scotoma is what? Scoto we mentioned RAS, this filtering system. But what you also have in your mind is blocks. You've created blocks from stress, from fears, from your parents, from your teachers, from your friends that have blocked this brain from working properly. We have to learn how to unblock that scotoma. You're living in this comfort zone. We want you to create a new one. You're gonna create a new one by setting these goals. You can also set organizational goals. The technique that I'm working with you on could be set for the whole organization to, so that everybody is dreaming and being fulfilled where they were. You're gonna self-evaluate your own ability. You're gonna have self-efficacy or confidence or collective efficacy if we're dealing with a company and the goal, and we're gonna achieve that goal. Affirmation is the self-talk. Visualization is to dream and believe your dreams. When I was very young, I was a Walter Mitty. I used to dream all the time. But I, but, but I was taught it was wrong for me to dream all the time. And I stopped dreaming. I was so silly. The secret, you're going to gain support from others. Once you come up with your goal and you work on your ability, your confidence, then you have to bring it into reality. You do it with your peers, with your friends, with your family, your relationships. You talk about your new self of what you're attaining. 
And then you go out and get members in the new comfort zone. For me, I have to go out and meet new CEOs. Consciously, I'm going to go out and meet CEOs. And I hope you will help me. I hope you will help me meet your CEO, that we can help change your organization. There's no reason that your company can't be the best in the world. Hear what I just said. There's no reason your company can't be the best in the world. Affirmations. You have to, I recommend you learn how to talk to yourself. Talk to your children, talk to your family, talk to your spouses. Tell them how great they are every single day. You should praise at least five people every single day. Get in the habit of praising. When I was younger, I could not praise. My father never praised me. If you looked at my grades in, in school, you would see the teachers didn't praise me. It was a miracle I got through high school, a miracle I got into college, a miracle I got into graduate school, a miracle that I was able to come start a company called Productivity and publish hundreds and hundreds of books. My life has been filled with miracles and I'm, and I'm so excited to share it with you. And then another concept is called feed forward. Most of us do feed feedback. My grandson uh, is an HR director in Portland of an organization. They have a hundred, hundred people there. And their job is to review the people at least once a year. How well did they do? So they're looking at feedback. How well did they do? Because they're saying, well, if you did this well in the past, then we could re reward you of the future. That's the normal process. No, we want to do feed forward. We want to reward you on what you're going to attain, not what you did attain. I'll say that again. We want to reward you what you're going to do, not what you did in the past. This is a reversal in thinking, and it's doable. I am in control of my future, said Lou Tice. Lou Tice was such a great genius. I recommend you read Lou Tice's books and then we can have discussion. I want you to Zoom with me. I'm setting up something that I call study groups. In selling my house in Vancouver, which I just did, I just moved this past weekend, and I had thousands of sheets of paper, and I gave a lot to Brian the last couple of weeks, but I have about a thousand, thousands of sheets. I scanned them all. So I have what I call this new library, and I want to share it with people. And the way I'm going to share it, I'm going to set up study groups. And in these study groups, I will give you a paper to read on your particular, if you're interested in lean, I'll give you maybe something from, from Shingo that Shingo wrote, or Fukuda, which is a great lean teacher, one of the first that I met. Now I'll give you something to read. I'll give it to maybe five or six people. I haven't decided how big the study group will be. And then you will read, you will read that paper. You'll talk about it in your study group. And then you're going to say, how can we, what can we do back in my own company? That's the purpose of the study group, is that you contain some, and I want you to make a commitment that you're going to go back and do it. You'll agree in your study group that, yes, we're going to test this. A company called Omark in Milwaukee, right outside of Portland, they went through this process. And they became the best lean company in America. So you might set up a study group. You might join one of my study groups. Send me an email. Write this down. Bodick at PCSPress.com. Stay in touch with me. Even though I'm in Japan, I'm on Zoom. <laughs> this is my last book. I, I recommend you read it, The Leader's Guide for Social Responsibility. That means the Americans' top corporations have come up with a new commitment this last year. They're going to treat their customers better, they said. They're going to treat their employees better. They're going to look at their suppliers as partners. They're going to look at the environment. They're going to go from short-term thinking to long-term thinking. They made a new commitment. 181 of the top 200 corporations made this commitment last year. The only problem, because of the virus, they're not doing it. Try to call any big company today and see how long it takes you to get them. Many of them will not even pick up the phone. They signed this commitment, but they're not living up to it. Okay, 
I want to thank you, you all very much for listening to me. Now it's your turn to ask some questions. Go ahead. Thank you. Maria, I'm turning it over to you now. Excellent. Thank you, Norman. Um, do you want to stop? If you stop sharing your slides, I put your um, email address in the chat so everybody has that. Um, if you want a copy of Norman's slides, you can email him directly. And I've been watching the chat throughout the talk. And I, um, first of all, I want to acknowledge like there was some good goal sharing and supporting each other happening in the chat as Norman was talking. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, is it Christian or Christiane? I think you had a question about um, confidence and affirmations. Do you want to ask your question? Please go yes, ahead. Yes, hello, how are you? Okay, uh, hi Norman. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I have a question. Uh, you say that uh, aff uh, affirmation is uh, it's something we, need, we should uh, do every day. But I think, for example, I don't, I, I, can't, I just can't imagine, for example, a, a, an important executive or an athlete, for example, they keep preparing themselves every day uh, in what they do. So if they know that they are good en enough, why should they repeat every day to themselves, I'm the best, I am good. I can okay, deal I understand. with everything. Very, very, very good question. Very good question. But, but every athlete repeats every day. Believe me, they're talking to themselves over and over again to get their psyche, to get them all excited before they play the game. Every sport does that. They get themselves excited. I was in the army. We, we used to talk to each other over and over again to get this brain to function properly as we were in the army. The brain, just as I said earlier, the brain is a wonderful slave and a terrible master. It's talking to you all the time. It has tens of thousands of thoughts that's giving you every day. And you listen to it. What I'm telling you now, you don't have to, but you have to reprogram it just like a computer. You have to reprogram your brain. You were born a genius, but you're not exercising that in your life. You make a million dollars right now. You can do it. Stephen, go ahead. You want to say something? I do. I know him, and how you doing, everybody? Okay. Uh, Norman and I go Thank back you. forever. Thank We've known each other. Thank you, Stephen, for the little blurb today. That was very nice of you. Yeah, I all yeah, I went out and announced it on the group and let folks know as soon as I saw it. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the original Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belts. I've been out here doing uh, process improvement for over 30 years. Christian, I just want to comment to your um, your question about you know that, and I I think it's a it's a good one. And I one of the things I've learned about that is that, uh, and not as an athlete, although more as a speaker, in that what I find is that doesn't matter um, how 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 many positive reviews I might get. When I get one negative, and I always get somebody stuff. Somebody's got something to say that. But it doesn't matter. For whatever reason, that's the one that I just remember. Now, I, you know, it's only one data point. I'll throw it away. But it stays in my head. Even as an athlete, it doesn't matter. If, I, if I'm shooting a ball, it's the one I miss. It doesn't matter if I get them all in. That one that I miss, though, it just stays in my head. And, what, what that, and so it's part of being human that we're always trying to excel and get better. And I think... When you have chatter in your head that's negative, it's just a distraction. And when you and you and you actually make different decisions when you're in that uncomfort zone than when you when you're in the comfort zone. And so, my my I agree with uh, Norman that when you when you change your mind to something positive with an affirmation, it's like flipping the channel. It allows you to just see the same world you saw before, but with a different filter. That, that's good, my Stephen. two cents on it. Stephen, very, very nice. I mean, I was taught by Rudy as an example. When you get something you don't like going in your head, you just say, cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. I don't need that. I just want something positive. I want something to make me very excited in life. Thank you, Stephen. You've been wonderful, Stephen. We'll, we'll stay in touch, you and I. Anyone else, please? Come on. 
I want to add to that. So um, on one of your slides, Norman, I think it, uh, the statement was, use your intuition, not your mind. And I was thinking back to that just salt example about, you know, our minds play tricks on us. And I, um, you know, intuition sometimes seems part of my mind. So can you elaborate on like, how do you make a distinction between you, you intuition and mind? You're beautiful. In many ways, you're very beautiful. Thank you. It's not so easy to make a distinction between intuition and mind. It's not at all. Not, it, you have to practice. Intuition is aha. Aha. It's something that happens just spontaneous. The mind normally picks up something and it drags it along. Intuition is something spontaneous, it's fresh, it's new, it does not come from your memory. So where does it come from? Everybody, believe it or not, is connected to the universe. Everybody is connected to the universe. All is one. The separateness is an illusion. This is something for you to study. The universe is one. It's available to everybody. The universe is talking to you and giving you this wonderful new information to guide you in your life. And it works, but you got to work on it. Thank you, Maria. You were beautiful. Thank you. Somebody else, please. Um, Sam had a question in the chat. And then uh, I think it looks like Dominic has a question too. So uh, Sam is asking, what is your highest goal, Norman? I have two goals. One, I want to reach CEOs now so I could really teach them wonderful things to have a great company and to live up to, to their commitment. Treat the customers wonderful. Treat the employees better than they've treated in the past. They used to focus just on profits only. Hewlett Packard laid off 120,000 people. I mean, it's crazy what American industry does. So I wanna have some effect on American industry. My other high goal is I wanna be absolutely free. Now I'm a slave to this mind. I wanna be absolutely free. The Buddha was free. Jesus Christ became free. I want to find a seat up there, right next to them. That's my goal, Maria. It's available for me, but you gotta, you gotta go after it. Thank you so much. Who's the next question? I think um, Dominic. Dominic, where are you? I'm right here. How you doing, sir? Thank you. It's a privilege to be talking to you. Thank you. My privilege to look at uh, you. Thank you. Who you I've just been I've been basically putting all of my thought I've been putting all of my thoughts around lean thinking and understanding what this thing can do uh, for organization for the last 18 years. Uh, two question. Uh, first question is what is the one thing that you are still searching and have yet uh, cracked or that that you do not yet understand and that you're trying to set up your mind to, to try to, to, to understand. And number two is um, my goal is to publish a book and I want to know what I need to do to work with you to make that happen. Okay. Great questions. Thank you very much. I uh, sure I'm search searching. I am searching for this ultimate state of freedom. All the religions have written about it, <laughs> but it's very confusing. All of these religious books are very confusing. Believe me, but the teachers were great. I mean, Buddha was great. Christ was great. Muhammad was great. <laughs> we just don't understand it. So I am, I am searching. I know my teacher, Rudy, said the following. You have a choice. I'm 88 years old. I'm going to leave this earth pretty soon. I don't know when, but one of these days I'm gone. And I have a choice. I can be ripped out of this body or I could be very conscious leaving and departing. I want to be conscious. That's what I'm searching for. All these religious books, and I've written, read thousands of them, that's what they're teaching me. Hopefully one moment I will discover the truth. The second thing is writing a book, you just write it. You write it and you produce it and the publisher will come to you and I'll help you. You just stay in touch with me. I have published close to 300 books. It is not difficult. I'm working on this new book in Hisano, not complicated. You just write the book and finish it. I'm very happy to help you. Take care. Thank you. Next. Who else? Come on. Charlie, go ahead. All right. Uh, I put in the chat, uh, even if you are positive and believe strongly in yourself, 
how do I get uh, others to fund my research? Because I have these ideas that are patentable and be worth a lot of money, but I need to get the data to prove and also for the patent and to run with, and from there run with it. Okay, it's, it's, I believe it's based upon just your strength, your strength and your believability of what you're doing and you just stay with it. Madame Curie, what, 9,000 mistakes that she made until she discovered radium. She radioactive. You know? And, and the, the trick is this, as long as you're making a living, you just keep that's what, that's Making a living is the hard part while I'm trying to develop the company. Well, but it's doable. Follow my advice today. Start talking to yourself so that your mind gives you the direction that you want. Make sure you have a very high goal of what you're trying to accomplish. Make sure you're very clear with that high goal. And then you have to have the confidence. And then you get support. You can start picking up the phone and calling people in Silicon Valley. There's money out there. You just have to keep going after it. And you never, 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 never give up. You never give up. It's as simple as that. You never, never, never give up. And I'm looking at you right now. You have the intelligence. You're lacking the confidence. That's all. I can see it in you. You're lacking the confidence. You've got to work on that confidence by talking to yourself over and over again. And you can talk a little bit louder. If you talk a little bit louder, you can hear yourself a little bit better. Thank you. Somebody else, anyone else, thank you. Hi, Norman, I'm Dahlia, uh, Mac, and um, thank you so much for sharing your incredible perspective. It's been uh, really fun to listen to you and uh, hear your energy and your enthusiasm for um, helping all of us. Um, I'm curious about sort of what, what do you consider to be some of your key daily kind of practices or routines? Um, uh, as you as you look at sort of how do you achieve your your own goals and sort of what would you pass on to us as some some of the critical things that you've learned across the years? Thank you very much. You're very sweet. You can see it in your face. You're a very sweet and nice person. It's just a miracle with me. You know, I try. I was told when I was 65, I was told to retire, and I listened to the person, not my intuition, and I lost a multi-million dollar company. It was a joke in my life. And then I, I found a wonderful woman in my life, which is my wife, Noriko. She's, she's here too, she's a doctor. She's an amazing lady. She decided age 50, she wants to become a doctor, believe it or not, and she became a doctor. I'm 88 years old and I work as hard today as I've ever worked in my life before. Every day I work. But the wonderful thing is I wanna do it. It's not something that I have to do. I really like what I'm doing. That's the trick in life, is to do what you want to do and everything that you do, you want to do. So now I have new things that come to me. It's a miracle. my new study group I'm all excited about. My new book, this he, he, Hisano book, is an amazing book to read and to apply in your life in, in setting goals. I'm just excited what God has given me. We're all lucky that we are one with this universe. Thank you so much. Just keep doing it. You'll succeed in life. Somebody else, please. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on. Uh, Norman, Christian, again, can you hear me? Yes. I, I have another question. Uh, what is the link between everything you're saying right now and TPS? I know, for example, that TPS is all about uh, people development, waste reduction, cost reduction, uh, and so on. But I'll do, I would like to 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 understand the the link, the connection. With okay, TPS. wonderful, wonderful. You're very good, Christian. Beautiful. The problem with lean, lean is very powerful. The problem with lean is everybody is copying. Ono's seven ways. Ono created those ways for Toyota. You go to hospitals, they're using the same ways. It's crazy. Number one, you go to a company and you say, what are your strategic problems? That's a key word. What are your strategic, strategic problems? 
What are the high problems that you have in your company? And you list all of those problems. Then you try to find ways to eliminate those problems. Ways to eliminate those problems. Maybe you could use some of the waste of Ono, maybe, but maybe you'll come up with new, like take the hospitals. What are the main problems in the hospital? They're killing people. Up to 400,000 people are dying by medical error. The whole country is crazy about the, the, the virus because close to 200,000 people have died, but 400,000 have died of medical error. You don't hear about it. The hospitals are losing money today. That's a terrible problem. 50% of the doctors are going through burnout today. So hospitals should be directing their efforts to attack what are their major problems. That's what lean should be doing. Throw away the ideas that you have in your head and try to re-examine what are the problems of this company that I could help them. And then you teach people continuous improvement. Kaizen is a wonderful thing to teach everybody that they could be solving problems. Thank you very much, Christian. Somebody else. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Another question. Thank you. Go ahead, C. Who's there? That was Christian. That was Christian. Dustin, was did Christian. you have a question or were you just... Uh, no, I'm staring at the camera thoughtfully. I'm trying to come up with a fun question. Um, Norman, thank you very much for the information and presentation. It's very inspiring stuff. Uh, I kind of want to, I, I can't come up with an original question, so I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite question to be asked at these sort of things? And can you answer it? Well, you know, first of all, it's very difficult to ask questions, I know. I studied with Rudy for two years. He was the greatest teacher I found on the globe. I mean, he was so amazing. And he would talk for an hour and then he would ask people questions and nobody would ask a question. It's very hard to ask a question. That's why you're all stuck. You're all stuck because you're not questioning your ability. Inside you is a genius. If you would ask that genius, it would give you the answer through into intuition. So from this talk of mine, as I'm learning from Isano, is you pick a very high goal. That's your challenge. Work, sit down, don't sit down in a seat for six hours and don't get up until you have a great goal for the rest of your life. And then go after it. Believe that you will attain it. Jesus said you could walk on water. How many people believe that? It's amazing. They go to church every week and they don't believe what their teacher has told them. Thank you very much, Deb. Anyone else? Anyone? Uh, I just, yeah, it's Dominic. I just feel like I need to, to add something. Uh, uh, the, the word that you said about the seven ways of Ono and how everybody tries to replicate those things to me this is this is um, this is showing that the, the, the teaching that you have to say and your understanding of what this is all about is is goes beyond uh, um, many people so there's, there's there's different schools of thoughts that have taken place um, historically well since 1997 and kind of starting in the 1990s there's the teaching of LEIs that it's extremely focused on the on the tools and the application of what has happened through the, the consulting firm of Toyota and people that have come out of this branch and are teaching some of the tools that 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 exists in the Toyota production systems and people. There's the whole Six Sigma thing uh, that come out of Motorola that in my opinion is just an extension of command and control and this whole um, evolution of, of, of quality management that, that had its root into the work of Deming and that took place uh, from the 60s, you know, coming through uh, American uh, manufacturing. Um, what do you think is the biggest misconception um, in the knowledge that exists out there versus what you believe? Yeah, because what you're saying is true. There are 33 tools that I've identified. I used to teach at Portland State University. I found every one of those tools. I have to be very careful with my ego. I found them all because I found the people in Japan that created them. That was my little talent of recognizing the talent in Japan. And so you have, a, you have a toolkit. Well, you take what you need and you use. But we take, all the, we take a hammer when we need a screwdriver. 
So we haven't thought of what is the problem and then find the right solution for that problem. It'll come to you. You have to trust yourself. But the first thing I said earlier, you have to identify what are the strategic problems of where you're working. But we don't do that. We like value stream mapping, so we run around doing value stream mapping. We like the Kaizen Blitz, so we run to do the Kaizen. They're all doing it. In science, it tells us that if you focus on something, it changes. So whatever you bring a tool to, you're going to bring some improvement. But you're not going to make fundamental improvements unless you attack the disease. Today, the disease is the virus. We got to figure out how to deal with this virus. That's our big problem to function on. And if you do it, I have a good student. You should all become students of mine. Alberto is an amazing student. He called me in May and asked me to teach him. And I said, okay, I will teach him. I teach him every week now. He, he is an ISO auditor. He has four people working with them. Five of them make these audits. All of a sudden in May, he has no business. Every company shut it out for him. He can't go visit and make an audit. He is stuck. Now it's September. He has more work than he's ever had in his life. He's looking for auditors. If somebody wants a job as an auditor, it's amazing what you can do to turn your life around when you're positive and you look for a new direction. What he did is instead of going there physically, he's doing it virtually. So he's making virtual audits and doing the same thing. But before he was restricted to Mexico where he lives, now because of the virtual audits, like now I'm in Tokyo talking to you, He's making audits in America. There's no limit what you can do when you unlock your mind. The mind is a slayer of the soul, what Rudy would say. So you have to learn from now on, stop listening to this mind of yours. Start to tell it, cancel, cancel. I'm not interested in what you're telling me. Thank you very much. Anyone else, please? Anyone else? I am very happy working with you today. Maria, I love you very much. You're wonderful. Brian, Thanks, you're great. Brian, thank you very much. And thank Matt. I'm sorry Matt is not here today. I wish you all very well. Thank you for being here. You can have a marvelous life. You can have a great life. You can have really whatever you want. Stephen, Yes, Stephen, you should have the final word. Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, uh, Norman, I just wanted to let you know, I got something big going on, and I know we talk every once in a while. I, I, so I just want to get on your calendar when you have a chance. I'll send you an email after this, but I've got something big going on right now around um, a book and a whole new concept that I'd like to see if you want to get involved with. But um, we'll talk offline on that one. But, I, but everyone, I did want to say, I did share in the chat, you know, we have the Lean Six Sigma community. I invite you all to come in. We got, I don't know, we're going to be hip hat to 685,000 folks. Norman's a member on there. Everybody is. So if you haven't been on there, that's a place that we all go and allow us to, to basically reach everybody in one place. Wonderful. Well, let's talk real soon because I want to tap into that 600,000 people. Yeah, I got, <laughs> uh, it's going to be 700 probably by next month. Okay, let's, let's teach them. Let's teach them this new study group. This is a new thing, and it's very, very powerful. So thank good. you, Stephen, for being here. Wonderful. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. See you again, I hope. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, Norman. And thanks, Stephen, for sharing those resources with us. Um, so for those of you that want to hang out and do some networking, we um, have been playing around with different formats here. Like we used to do the networking in the beginning of the meeting, um, but I know there's probably some people that just come for the speaker or the activity. So that's totally cool too. Um, if that's you, thank you so much for joining us. And if you want to stay connected with us, we're at leanportland.com. And we do all of our events like this through Eventbrite. So if you follow us on Eventbrite, you'll get a notification when we put uh, another event like this out there. Um, so what we typically do for the networking is break is go into small breakout rooms. And I just kind of set a timer on there, maybe like a few minutes to introduce yourself, meet somebody that you might not have met before, swap stories about what you're doing. 
Um, and then we'll kind of wrap that up around 6.15 or 6.20. Or like, we'll do a few rounds of three to four minutes each, and then we'll kind of wrap it up around 6.20 and come back together and I'll say bye together.